Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing the light blue trunks and weighs an even 148 pounds. He's from Elizabeth, New Jersey. As a professional, undefeated in 11 straight bouts, eight by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Derek Too Sweet Rolo. And his opponent fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the red trunks with white trim. He weighs an even 145 pounds. He's from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, South Philly to be exact. His professional record, 18 victories against only two defeats, 13 by KO. Introducing Mike Machine Gun Manja. Gentlemen, received your instructions prior to entering the ring. Therefore, I expect to obey all my commands. I expect a good, clean fight professionally. Do you have any questions at this time? Touch gloves, go back to your corner. So there's a look at Mike Mungin out of South Philly. And we have seen a number of boxers come out of that part of Philadelphia. Great fight area. In the other corner, too sweet, Derek Roland. We'll see if he's too sweet tonight. Mungin has been in there against better, and so would have to be considered the favorite, and Mungin comes out gunning, if you will. Really known for good left hooks. He goes to the body well downstairs with the right hand. The fast hand you have to look at for Mungin, forcing a fast pace on Roland, who's got to be concerned with that. It's a good left hand. Mungin came in, incidentally. You can see he'd already broken a sweat, and Roland not at all. And right off the bat, that's a factor. Roland came in here a couple minutes ahead of Munchen. A little bit of an experience there. And Roland saying he would not show us the southpaw stance. Well, of course, he comes out that way. Absolutely. A natural right-hander. You'll see him square up. You'll see him kind of do it from both sides. He's a good body puncher. He's got to be a little concerned with the amount of rounds. He's never been 10. Three right hands that time by Roland. Roland has gotten his competitors out of there with a greater frequency than Mungin has, but Mungin has been in there with better. And when you look at that higher percentage, uh, at least two out of three for both uh, high knockout ratios, fair to say. I think the difference is that Mungin, when he's done it, is a little bit more explosive than Roland, who wears fighters down. Right hand again by Mungin in close. I'll tell you what, they cannot go ten rounds like this. Been a pleasing opening round as far as pace. Very up tempo. Roland not afraid of much. Taking a big step up, but really not afraid to unload his guns and try to establish some respect. He's doing that. He definitely is. The early part of the round was all and Now the later part, there's a big left hand. By Roland, that hurt Mungin. And he squared up and caught Mungin from the side as he does there. And a subtle little step to his right and the left hand coming across really made it a power punch. Big first round. Well, he said he was going to pace himself. More like for a 100-yard dash. That's right. See that? He said he was going to be a right-hander. He's going to go orthodox, and he's going to pace himself. 0 for 2. And he goes back to the right-hand style. He said his biggest concern in switching up is just to keep his, his hands up when he did make the switch. So we come down toward the end of the first round, a very up-tempo and very interesting first round of boxing. Up close and personal as Roland goes up to the head for two of his many punches in that first round. Mungin won the early part of the round, Roland the late part of the round, very tough round to score. Not surprised to see that kind of a round go down as a split on the judges' cards. Well, there's a new feature, Punch Profile, brought to you by Old Spice. This will give you a pretty good look, a pretty good idea of exactly how the fight is going. And as you can see, Roland threw almost twice as many punches as Mungin did. And Mungin, 
early in the round probably had at least half of those 74 punches. So it was even a more dominant roll on in the second half of the round. That accuracy factor, very critical there. And you wonder with the pace and the way those fight of punches were coming if the judges see the same thing. What the punch profile will really tell you, it'll give you a pretty good idea of just how the fight is going, and it'll even give you an idea of strategy sometimes, it'll give you an idea of pace. It might not necessarily help you in terms of judging the fight, but it'll give you a pretty good idea of the ebb and flow of the fight. Another right hand by Roland. Munger looks like he hasn't come out of a that fast pace that started the fight. Roland has really been taking it to him, pressing him. And it's been tough for Munchen to find punching room, whereas Roland likes to fight this way, and often does. Another good right hand, but a counter-punching left by Munchen. What Roland does in there, which is so nice to see a young fighter do it, He's turning and punching with the turn, already anticipating what he wants to do next, going into his next shot. A subtle angle movement that gives him another chance to land a quick shot, usually a cross. Go back up, but as he's doing it, the right hand is already in motion. Starting downstairs with the right hand and bringing it up. Roll on, fighting a very good fight so far. Took an uppercut. This is Roland's kind of fight. Make it a battle of attrition. Go to the body and just try to take the heart away from your opponent. Right hand by Munjin. Neither fighter has taken a backward step at this point. Another good shot. And now Munchen goes southpaw. So two very up-tempo rounds here in this 10-round welterweight fight in Atlantic City. Turned southpaw and really comes across with that left hand. Had Roland out of position. Two very tough rounds to score. Munchen started this one off with a right hand. Flexes by both fighters. Mungin also doing a little bit of the stepping and punching as he's anticipating the next shot. It is amazing to me, Dave. Fighters from South Philly have the same look about them. Oh, it's meanness. It's we're going to go to the body. It's we fight until one of us quits. There were a lot of great Philadelphia middleweights in the early 1970s. They just punched themselves into antiquity with those ring wars. In fact, going back to even in the 50s and 60s, some pretty good middleweights and rollerweights out of Philadelphia. A lot of varying thoughts in boxing, too, as to whether a fighter should come up that way, whether he gets deprived of his learning process and gets burned out too soon. Well, in fact, there's so many great gym wars there that the stories go that many good Philadelphia fighters never really got out of the gym. Very true. Milan still doing a good job trying to get downstairs to the body. Munchen moving more in this round than he did in the first two. Milan switching. A lot of cantering going back here. Roland said he would go softball more. Now he goes back to, to orthodox. But he said he would go softball more if he felt that Munchen was very quick. Munchen is breathing heavier of the two so far, even though he lands a couple shots there. Munchen needs to establish a jab right now. He's not doing it, and Rolana's is walking in. Munchen wants to play them tit for tat, which becomes human nature here. It's not always the best. not being nearly as active in this round as he was in the first two. A little bit too much time in the ropes. He moves well at times, but he, he backs up for long periods of time. Right 
right at the moment, Roland clearly looks to be the stronger. I think he made a good point a moment ago that Munger, I have an idea, wanted to kind of take a blow in this round, and Roland is just not letting him. Go back into the corner of Roland. Okay. Very, very good. There you go. Only okay. game that you have a little more, okay? It is. Go. Take it easy for yourself by using the jab. Roland looks in very good shape, very calm, pressed Munchen that entire round, and I really do feel that Munchen was trying to well, you know, kind of catch his breath there. You know, the tremendous start that they had to the fight, and Roland looks very good. Munchen not doing bad on percentage, but only 22 thrown. He's really taken a lot of time off, according to that. That right hook to the body, okay? I jam in there yep. straight, boy. Right hook and that left straight is there. Don't try to kill him. You okay. can't kill him, Pop. You're hurting him to the body without yeah. killing him. Okay. Just okay. stick it in there. Okay? okay? Now, there's a case of a corner that's giving this fighter a little bit too much information. I think they're just trying to keep him totally pumped up so far in the fight. Sometimes it's good to let the adrenaline take over, and sometimes you really have to get into X's and O's in there. Probably if they got into X's and O's and Y's and V's. And a few Z's to be named later. That's right. <laughs> we don't, we're not used to seeing Mungin have to back up this much in his fights. We're used to seeing somebody dictate the pace, land explosive left hooks, go downstairs, as he did in the beginning of the fight. But Roland has proven to be very tough, not intimidated. Very impressive for a 20-year-old fighter. Very definitely. And as a matter of fact, I saw him in his last fight in San Antonio, and he fought a guy by the name of Moses Robinson, and really didn't look very good. He fought down to the caliber of his, op his opposition. Now here is an exact opposite of that. He's fighting up to Mungin's level. It's no accident that Roland has gotten this far. He had a storied Golden Gloves career in the amateurs, but he was at an age, uh, 19 years old, where he didn't want to start another Olympic track because it might take him too long to get into the pro ranks. He figured he would do his training right now and get an early start. Uh, it's a different decision when you're 16. Left hand again by he is showing tremendous discipline, staying within a style that is good for him. He's not trying to explode. Even when he lands punches, he's trying to land one, two at a time. And a double right hand a moment ago, but he took about three punches in exchange from Munjin. So an even exchange between the two. Munjin is always dangerous. He's got power. You saw him knock down Joey Farrell here on ESPN, and then Farrell came back and won the fight. Really started Joey going a lot of places. He also knocked down Mickey Ward, though, and beat Mickey Ward after taking that fight on four days' notice. That's the fight that brought him back to this level. As we go by in subsequent rounds, the punch level should drop off a little bit as now it's settling in for a longer fight. Yeah, and you really start to have the idea that this fight could come down to condition. Roland wanted to pace himself. He won the first three rounds, I think. We'll see what price it cost him later. Right now, Roland is getting off quicker. Mungin is scoring basically on counter-punching and is fighting the most part of the fight, backing up. We'll be back. Thrown and landed still very much in Roland's favor. Just indicative of the fact that he is taking the fight to Mungin and he's being more effective in doing so. And as you watch that, bear in mind, will Roland tire? We're going to take a good look at that. He's never been beyond seven. That's a big jump. That's 30% more, actually closer to 40% more. He's got to go. Of the two right now, I would say Mungin is the more tired, but many times, of course, a fighter will do that through the middle part of the fight, coast just a little bit, 
and then suck it up for the last three or four rounds. Now, whether or not Munger is doing that thing to be seen. The only thing about that is if it's a close fight after three or four rounds, you can afford to do that. If Munjin's corner believes that he's lost the first four, he's got to win these middle rounds. He can't just get through them. Good shot there by Roland. An uppercut with the right hand. There's a right hand by Munjin, and he took a right hand in return. And that time, Munjin got down low, took advantage of the fact he was a little smaller, and used it for power. Roland answered back with a nice right hand coming across. Fighters have been very accurate. And now Munchen thinks he's been hit low and took a temporary stop. Yes, he did. Tony Orlando did not allow it, so he recovered. But he's really getting rocked, and he rocks Roland back. But it is Munchen who seems to be in a little bit of trouble right now. Remember the basic rule of boxing, protect yourself at all times. That initial instinct, he wanted to complain, and it cost him. Munchen is spitting blood for the last couple of rounds also. Don't know if that is indicative of a problem or not. Roland has been getting wider with his punches in the last couple of rounds. He ought to tighten up a little bit because he can get hit with a counter very easily the way he's fighting. Munchen looks to me like he's hurt. He's either hurt or tired or a combination of both. It looks like he desperately wants to get through this round. Took the right hand again, but he was rolling backward with it. And there's a right hand by Munjin, and it shocks Roland out of the blue. Right at the bell. He's always dangerous, and no matter how badly he was getting hit there, he's got that right hand power, and he used it. He caught Roland off balance. Boy, how fate enters into it, huh? Isn't that amazing? Because Munjin really did look like a tired and hurt fighter. And we were mentioning how Roland was getting wider with his shots, opening up more. All right, 21 knockdowns between the same. That wasn't even And Munjin really rocked him with that, Roland coming forward and even though Munchen helped him a little bit had that not been the end of the round he puts two more punches together I think he puts Derek Roland down these are the left hooks that Mike Munchen has thrown 54 and 24 pretty high percentage of left hooks I think he wanted to throw a little more than he wanted to and Roland averaging 107 punches around exceptional so now we'll see how much that right hand affected Roland as we start this round. And right now, we have a new fight. Absolutely. As far as psychology. It is now Roland who's backing up and Munchen who's on the attack. Munchen has found himself in terms of power. Roland will have to tighten up. Big lead right by Munchen, but he's got to get something to go with it. Roland is approaching his natural tiring limit, which seven rounds is as long as up until now. In round six. Munchen has to make sure it's an honest ten rounds for Roland, that he can't coast over eight, nine, and ten if it goes that long. The pace has to be pressed. just looking for the one shot here. He seems to have settled back a little bit too much after that early fire. The way he came out in round six, he's got to find five rounds almost like that. Meanwhile, Roland's punches seem to have lost some sting. Throwing a lot of pawing punches. Here. Arm weariness has to come into effect for him least over the next couple of rounds and Munchen has to try to use that and get back in this fight from a points perspective.
not quite sure what Munchuk was complaining about there. Maybe a butt. I think he thought there was a collision of heads, but he's got more pressing matters. He landed a nice right hand coming across and then did nothing else. Now, Munchen may be doing enough to win this round, but he's got to win the rounds big. From a physical standpoint, if he's going to do it. Munchen covers up in his own corner again. Now he backs Rolot up. He had a straight right hand in there. So we'll come to the end of six rounds, and it seems that Mike Mungin has done enough to win this one. We'll be back. Mungin finds an opening, and he needs more of that. And not just a, a lead right hand. He needs to put them together. This is the seventh round now, and once again, it appears more and more likely that it's going to come down to whoever spent the most effective hours in the gym. Pace has been fast. And you see a bit of a change with Mungin, 31%. And Roland, even though he threw less punches, and Roland missing a lot more, 18% low connect percentage, down from over 50% early in the fight. Yeah, Roland threw a lot of pawing punches, and not very accurate pawing punches. Now, Roland. But despite that fact, and I gave Munch in the last round, I don't know if he really took advantage of what was offered to him. Here's his experience, and he's got a chance to take it away from this kid. And I don't really think he did enough to do that, to turn the sway uh, permanently. Another headbutt came close just a moment ago. By Roland Munchen counters with three punches. Now, what Derek Roland is doing to Munchen, that's really what Munchen needs to do to rally back Roland up and take the attack because. The longer arms of Roland, he's able to tie Munzen up and really keep the pace of the fight choppy, which he'd like to see now. <laughs> Munzen having trouble getting through it. There he goes to the body. Good body shot there by Munzen. He needs a lot more of that. That means he might have to move on angles a little bit more, bob and weave a little bit more, and get Roland to move his hands so that that body is left unprotected. But you're also looking at a tired Mike Munson. Once again, a warning from Tony Orlando about headbutting. Good body shot by Roland. That's what he said he was going to do early and really hasn't that much. About to meet Mike Mungin. Roland now is in uncharted waters. And the key to it for him, how much will Mungin take out of him over these next three rounds? Or will he let him glide through it? Mungin trying to go to the body as his corner exhorted him to do. Munjin really has had a problem getting inside. There was a good right hand by Munjin. And it's because he moved and did it. Watch your head. There was one shot and it was from the outside. Of course, it looks so easy from here. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Get back like it was in the early rounds, but he is staying busy. Right hand 
They really gave us a pace in the first five rounds of the fight. Now it's going to be more grit than technique. Not much damage being done by either fighter in that situation. Smothering Munchen again, keeping that left hand up, which is important to avoid the counter shot as he comes in. Munchen just missed him there with that, which would have really rocked him, but it sailed over the top. Go punch him. Hold it. Step back. Tell you how good of a fight it's been. You haven't had to see too much of Tony Orlando in this very little referee. Well, on in that last. Close encounter on the ropes. Did get a couple of uppercuts. That might be something to look for. Break! No punches. Get back to me. He's got a lot of points. Well beyond his years. Trying to go with that uppercut. He did get one in, followed it up with a left hand. Ten seconds left in this round. And Roland might have done enough in this round to win it. We'll be back. Action from the last round. Munchen comes up nicely with the right hand and rocks roll on a little bit, but it's just not been enough of that. Before. Round number nine. <clears throat> Munchen's going to have to stay busy, it would seem. And when you look at the grit battle so far in the last three rounds, Roland got off first and won the eighth round, I think, and is proving to be tougher unless he gets caught. Munjin catching up individually, and he Good got shot hurt. shot right there, and Roland chases him down. Munjin escapes. The uppercut drops Munjin. And it's a typical Derek Roland exhaustion knockdown. It's not one punch, it's just everything. And, that and might that's be it. I think Munjin just didn't want any more. And maybe affected by those shots to the ribs, too. He looks like the fatigue and maybe a bit of an injury factor in there. Roland, what makes him so tough, and yet not a one-punch fighter, he'll slap at you from all angles, and he won't hurt you with one shot, but he'll hit you almost every time. Fought a very smart fight, too, it seems. Very poised, and he came out very strong for somebody who wanted to pace himself. Had a moment of indecision there in the middle. Got a second win and came on very strong at the end. A confident young man. You're going to see a lot of him. He fought very well against a good fighter. Yeah, his confidence certainly had to grow from tonight's fight. As I mentioned, we saw him in San Antonio, and really he looked okay, but I wouldn't have thought, to be very honest with you, I wouldn't have thought at that point, after watching him fight Moses Robinson, he would be ready for a guy like Mike Munchen, let alone beat him. Here's a guy who turned pro 14 months ago after not an overly extensive amateur career because he wanted to just start the pro experience. He was in those four-round fights, and he's really gone far fast. Here's another look. The uppercut by Roland, and just another in a series that Munchen is down and he gets up, but now the finishing salvo coming in here, and Munchen hurt by that, but it's more, this is a fatigue knockout. This is no more. It's over. Let's get the official word from Michael Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Tony Orlando stops this bout at 56 seconds of the ninth round. The winner by TKO, still undefeated now, 12 and 0 with 9 KOs, Derek Too Sweet Rollo, NBA middleweight.